All right then gang, so as well as React Query, we can install another package which works with React Query to help us when using the library, and that package is called Query DevTools. And it gives us a development console in the browser that shows what's happening with our queries behind the scenes, so it's really helpful. So I'm gonna install that separate package now, first of all. I'm gonna open up a new terminal so I don't have to quit out of this process. And I'm gonna say npm i for install, save this to dependencies, and it's called React query dev tools like so so hit enter and install that package first of all okay so now we have that let's close this down and import it so i'm going to go to the app root component over here and at the top i'm going to paste in this import where i import react query dev tools from react query dev tools so how do we use this down here well, we need to render these dev tools to the DOM and I want to do it adjacent to this app right here, not inside the app. So I could down here say I want to use this React Query dev tools component like so. And also I'm going to add a prop called initial is open and set that equal to false. So by default, when we open up the app in a browser, we don't just see this giant box on the screen as well. This dev tools, we have to open it up. Okay, so now we've done that, the next thing we need to do is surround all of this in some other element because the root of this JSX has to be one element and currently we have two top level elements. So let's just surround all of this with a fragment, so empty angle brackets like that and this is basically an empty element just so we have one root level element and that is now fine. So if I save this now and check it out in the browser, then we see this little thing down here in the bottom right, and that's a switch to open up these dev tools, and it looks like this. So you can see the queries that we have, and we can already see we have one called planets that it's made in the background to grab these planets. So if we click on that, we can see information about the planets request. So first of all, you're gonna see right here, we can refetch if we want to, to get fresh data. And also down here, we can see the date itself, and we can see all of the results we have in that data. We also have information about the query itself, and we also have some config as well. So we're gonna look at that in a minute, that config, but also over here you can see we have these little icons right here. Now at the minute it's saying we have one stale query, meaning that already this data could be out of date. It could be old because we fetched it a few seconds ago essentially, and the data could have updated since then. So when we first fetch the data, it's fresh for a fraction of a second, and then it becomes stale straight away. And you're gonna see that if I try to refetch, keep your eye on this fresh icon right here, it goes green for a millisecond and then it becomes stale again. So React Query uses this under the hood to decide when to refetch data in the background to keep it fresh. And it does this, for example, when we refocus on the window for all stale data. If data is stale, it will try to refetch it in the background to see if we have some updated data for us. So if I go away and then come back over here to refocus, you see that blink again? That was us refocusing the window and it refetched the data in the background to see if we had any updated data that we could render to the DOM. So again, that was only fresh for a millisecond. Just watch this again fresh for a millisecond. So it's doing that refetch in the background all the time to make sure we have up-to-date data. But we're always seeing cache data in the browser anyway, so we don't have to wait for anything to see, which is nice. So we can control how long data is fresh for in the config of React Query, and that's what this config option right here is all about. So the stale time right here is zero, meaning that as soon as we get data, it's not even fresh for a millisecond, it's automatically stale. But if we want to wait two seconds, for example, or 2000 milliseconds, we can specify that in a config object. So how do we do that? Well, when we use the query or the use query hook, which is in planets, if I can find it right here. So when we use this right here, we can also pass as a third argument, an object which represents the config. So inside here, for example, I could set the stale time. So stale time and set that to be 2000 milliseconds. And now a query will remain fresh for two seconds before it becomes stale. So if I save it and come over here, now you see it's fresh for longer, then it becomes stale. If I change this to like 5000, then it's fresh for five seconds. 
Now, if I go to another browser and then come back to refocus, it tries to get that. But if I go quickly within that five seconds, it doesn't do another refetch because it's still fresh. It only refetches stale data. So there are other things we can change in the config as well. If I just open this up, we can see we have this retry thing right here. And that is how many times failed queries should be retried before giving an error. The default for this is three times. And we saw that earlier on in this series. We also have the cache time right here, and that's how long stale queries are cached for before they're disposed of. Now the default is 300,000 milliseconds, which is five minutes. And that means if we go to another component and then back again, it will use cache data and it will be really quick to load for those five minutes since the fetch. So let's try setting this to 10 milliseconds and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna come down here and say cache time and set that to 10 milliseconds. And in fact, let's change this back to zero to get the default behavior again. And go back over here. And notice now, every time we go to these different pages, it's refetching. And that's only for the planets, not the people, because we're using this in the planets component right here. So every time we go to planets, we see loading data. Now, before, before we had this, we didn't see that because we were using cached data. So if we go to refresh, first time we see loading, but then if we go back to planets, we don't see it because it's using cached data. Does that make sense? Now there's also other properties we can add to this such as refetch on mount and that's true by default meaning we refetch data in the background every time a new component mounts which needs the data to see if it's updated. There's also properties which have functions as values that can fire at different stages of the request. For example, we can use the on success property right here to fire a function whenever we have a success status. So let me just do a quick one right here, quick arrow function, which says console.log and inside that data fetched with no problemo. Okay, so if we save that now, we should see that in the console if we open it up. So data fetched with no problemo. We could also have a function for on error as well if we wanted to. And we could use these functions to maybe show notifications to the users when either new data has been added or something goes wrong. And there's more options you can add to this as well. So for a full list, definitely check out the docs. They're gonna be in the description down below. But that, my friends, in a nutshell, is the React Query DevTools and the config option right here. So next up, we're going to see how to pass query variables to our use query hook.